Welcome to Breaking Down Bergman. I'm David Friend. I'm Sonia Sturman. Today we're looking at To Joy. Today we're looking at To Joy. It's a new song. For my own opinion, it's good. I don't know what you think. Jag har att hälsa två nya medlemmar välkomna till Helsingborgs orkesterförening. Det är Stig Eriksson, istället för Sunkan, som dog i somras. Gud fröjde skälen. Sen har vi fått hit ett fruntim i orkestern. Det är lite löjligt och helt mot naturen. Men hon är hjälpligt begåvad. Hon sitter där, om ni inte redan har sett henne. Hon heter Marta. Ni är välkomna. Yeah. Go for it, Now that the 1940s are completed, we start the new decade with To Joy, Bergman's eighth film in 1950. The verdict on this one is decidedly negative in our opinion, but there are some good elements in it, and I think one of the more interesting facts is that this is a more personal film from Bergman, which might explain some of the reasons that we didn't like it quite as much. I think for me, more... I would say I didn't, okay, I didn't enjoy it, but mostly because I was uninspired. Um, and I think the reason for the disappointment was really that we've, we've noticed a real kind of pickup in the films, and there's been a progression in terms of how he was directing and, and uh, the cinematography and the themes, everything was getting really powerful with uh, Prison and Thirst. Yeah. And then, so we expected there to be this continuity with To Joy, um, especially considering some of the autobiographical elements of the film, and then it just really fell flat. Yeah, it pretty much stalled out of the gate. The one uh, thing that I think is worth noting here is that this is really a step from there's There is a progression here. Bergman was definitely working through some issues, it seems, just from some of the uh, background and contextual readings that we did. So in Thirst, for example, we kind of saw those really acidic uh, relationships and the marriages and, and that were falling apart and that was kind of representing the end of his second marriage. Bergman's own. Bergman's own, marriage. indeed, yeah. thank you. And uh, with, uh, with To Joy, I believe it was kind of referencing a lot of the kind of lack of confidence and self-doubt and kind of imposterism that he felt as a creator, as a director, as an artist. And, um, you know, I think that might have really affected not only the story that he was telling, which was ironically mediocre for a story about mediocrity, <laughs> yeah. but also the way in which he told it, with all these kind of stalled moments and never really quite getting us there. One thing that kind of made me pause right from the beginning was the opening scene. So he took it out of sequence and actually foreshadowed everything for us in the beginning with um, you know, the demise of the wife of the main character, Marta. Um, so then you go through the whole movie and instead of, you know, being, having a sense of tension and, and wonder, you know throughout the whole movie she's not going anywhere. So she's flat from start to finish. You know she's going to die and you know how she dies. It's just a question of, well, when does she die and how does it affect our main character, yeah. uh, Stig? So yeah, that was disappointing. And then I found the whole film to really be this kind of, you know, progression of stock themes that we've seen from Bergman before, so, you know, fidelity, marriage, family, um, family social convention, yeah. you know, like, we've seen all those, but he hasn't done anything with them, he's just kind of bringing them out again. Yeah, and there's a lot of theories that uh, the main character, Stig, is Bergman in some sense, mm -hmm. um, a struggling artist who's working his way up to uh, the dream career that he wants to have as a notable artist in the craft that he loves. But there's a little undercurrent to that as well. So not only is he a struggling artist, but he also believes that he's a genius. Yeah. So while he's surrounded, so we have, he's a violinist, he wants to be a soloist in the orchestra, and he thinks that he is significantly better than all his peers, but no one can recognize it. And uh, the tie aside from the, the char main character is that Stig's mentor in the film is actually played by Bergman's mentor in reality, the uh, director who, if you might remember, stepped in to film the final scenes of Crisis, well now here he is on screen. Right, and so he kind of um, gives the, the character in the film, Stig, a lot of little reality checks early on. You know, while his skill as a musician, he's certainly no virtuoso, 
and the character refuses to come to those realizations and he pushes and pushes so hard that eventually he does get a chance at a solo at a very important uh, concert and he chokes. And so that's pretty much the end of his career. He really goes off the deep end, he drinks, he ruins his marriage, blah, blah, blah. So a lot of the theory here is that, of course, these are Bergman's own fears. As a relatively young director with only eight films. Not only really fears, I think regrets too, because if I understand correctly, he did do some of those things. He had two failed marriages. Yeah. He was no stranger to alcohol. Yeah, that's true. Um, he had some pretty big flops in the cinemas. True. And uh, I think a lot of this was both him kind of airing out his inner de demons, but also in a way kind of wincing in guilt at some of the things that he's done because there's no way that you're watching this film and saying, oh, you know, that's Dick, he's a stand-up guy. There are some things in the movie, though, that I did enjoy, and one of them is the fact that Bergman has once again incorporated music into the film in a really successful way. I mean, he's actually worked it into the plot here in, in, uh, in a method that he didn't he hadn't used before. We've seen it in Music and Darkness and many of the other films where music has been a presence, but here it really is part of the plot line. And it is part of the structure of the film. The symphony is almost its own character. To be honest, I found the orchestral scenes kind of cumbersome. Really? Some of the scenes are in increasingly long. But some of the scenes at the same time look fantastic. I mean, there are some crane shots worked in there uh, where the camera literally goes in to the orchestra um, and observes certain musicians as they play their instruments and then glides back up above them and selects another one, and it's a really crafty piece of work, and I'm just kind of watching it, and I guess as a, as a uh, fan of cinema and the way that I am, I guess I was kind of drooling a little bit, but I just really enjoy, <laughs> I really enjoyed that. Um, I mean, we haven't seen anything from Bergman in that sense before, we've seen some creative stuff, but not in this more technical way, I think we've seen more of like the art scene. For me personally, I don't think the lapses in, in plot, in theme development, in character development, um, I don't think that makes up for it. Right, and I was gonna, I was gonna say that actually, is that yeah, these, these are kind of little fantastic tidbits, but they don't make a spectacular film in and of themselves. Um, this is still a mediocre Bergman movie, it doesn't, as you said, as we said before, it doesn't really show the progression. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that that makes it a disappointment. I, we, disappointed, yeah. There was one scene that I think we both really enjoyed. The character Stig has gotten so down in the spiral that he's actually become uh, drunk and abusive of his, of his wife. And there's this one climactic scene before they actually separate their marriage where um, just the, act, like, the whole scene was really raw and yeah. it seemed really real. And it really struck me because it was so out of character for this film. That it, Stood out. Right. So and that I, th I enjoyed. I think it was also one of the more uh, authentic performances that Bergman has captured uh, to this point. Mm -hmm. um, but again, it doesn't make the film fantastic, and yeah. I guess that brings us to our verdict here. Pass. Here, yeah, pass. I, I think it's also a pass. There are, uh, there are some good things here, but it's just not enough to make it a must-see. No, not at all. We'd like to know what you guys thought of the movie as well. Uh, post your comments on the page. Of course, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, and join us next time for what might be Bergman's most elusive film, This Can't Happen Here. Yeah, assuming it doesn't elude us too, because I think you're still looking, right? Yeah, having a little bit of trouble finding it, but we will <laughs> find it by the time that we have to put this together, fingers crossed. But uh, thanks for joining us for Breaking Down Bergman, and we'll see you next time.